Hey, 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 guys. Give me a second here. We are going live. Here we are. All right. So, we're going live today. Hey, guys. It's your pal, Victor. And today, we're going to do some live drawing. Live drawing. Had to take a little bit of a break because the internet situation the last couple days here where I live has been all kinds of crazy. And uh, we had several outages which were obnoxious. So key today is to not have an obnoxious outage. So uh, today we're gonna do uh, some commissions. There's a couple guys in here already. Hey, 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 what's up? Uh, so if you, in case you haven't tuned in before, we started doing this right when the, uh, pandemic started and largely what happens here is I open up a window into my drawing studio and you guys get to see me draw some stuff, which is all sorts of fun and exciting. Today we're doing a commission for Dwayne. He is getting an atom bomb. So we're going to do an atom bomb, and if there's time left afterwards, uh, we'll draw some other stuff. How does that sound? Sounds pretty spiffy to me. So let's get cracking. And uh, the first thing I think when I think of an atom bomb is an atom bomb cloud, which is always fun. So we're going to do an atomic bomb blast, which will be all kinds of cherry shades of yellows, oranges, reds, and peach to give it depth, dimension, and texture. But what you're gonna see right now is kind of like the uh, outline of it, which is gonna kind of look like a poof. I don't know what this kind of looks like, a pile of mashed potatoes. I do like me some mashed potatoes. But yeah, that's the first thing you're gonna see. And we're going to cut a hole in the mashed potatoes here so we can put in the steerer, which is the base of the explosion. If you've seen any uh, action movie in the last 20 years, it also looks like the floating ring of garbage that the villain tends to shoot around the villain, uh, building near the film's climax. Probably you saw something like this in Suicide Squad or Ghostbusters. Here, it's a floating ring of explosion. And then here's some juices. And, all right, so, just so you know, here's how it goes. How to draw atom bomb in a few simple steps. Squiggle, 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 swoop, down, peel. And then there should be a little overflow, plop, plop, chunk. That's right, sound effects. You said climax. <laughs> yes, I tend to use a lot of adult words. It's fun. All right. Hey, guys, how's it going? How's your... How did your Memorial Day weekend go? Was it eventful? Did you have a cookout? Now we're doing the little... Halloween bowl that is his head. Sean is here. Aloha. Aloha to you. So is Ron. All right. Let's get some, uh, get some stuff cracking here. If you have, if you have missed a while, these are my, on my new sketch card stock. That looks like, uh, oh, the Horrible. Horrible. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I wanted to go live yesterday, but the internet in the neighborhood was just out, and the day before it was the same thing. So I just, if I go live on my data plan, I only get like two or three bars here, so it would just look really chunky. So hopefully we don't have any issues today. Because, you know, a few times I've had issues when I've gone live on my data plan. And then I'm like, where are you guys? It says it's recording. All 
And I did get some stuff done off stream though. Um, just some commissions for other people. Did a Mad Axe sketch cover and I did a, uh, Trump sketch cover, which came out good, even though, like, you know, I'm not a big, I'm not a Trump guy, so, but it came out good, I don't, you know, you can still make stuff you don't like look cool, so, kind of like a baby Herman vibe going on, there's Ryan, what up, man, and Julian, oh, we got a few people hanging out, all right, so, let's do the tie here. Yeah, then uh today I just ran some errands. I had a ton of uh had a ton of uh prints to mail off. I found some uh singles extras of my uh wrestler set uh from two thousand from two thousand nineteen that I can make a few more sets of. So what I might do uh Friday is uh I'm gonna drop some head sketch cards. And uh, we'll put those up in case you want to get an inexpensive uh, mystery sketch card from me, and a set of and a set of my wrestler cards. We'll put those up on Friday, along with some uh, old out of long out of production prints. So if you want to help an artist out and get some cool art for yourself, that's going to be an opportunity. All right, so. He's all done with the uh, line art, so let's do some skin tones. Cool, man. Yeah, so tomorrow, look for that. I'm going to draw up some head sketches. There'll be some uh, cool... I'm, I'm probably going to do some horror in OS1 characters. It's kind of going to be first come, first serve on those. So, should be fun. They're gonna. Be, these won't be in the night in those uh, glass cases that I had before, because um, I said these are just some extras I found when I was cleaning up that I can make some sets of. I can't make any more sets of the Gross Vegas ones. Those are a hundred percent gone. I have some like random off singles I might throw together. Uh, with another little project I was thinking of putting together, actually. So keep an eye out for that. But we'll do this one first because it seems more doable. Yeah, you know, surprise so sketches are the best, aren't they? Especially when you end up with a cool character you weren't expecting. All right, so what I'm doing now is I am using this Copic uh, to kind of outline some areas of this Atom head. Um, I've been really busy finishing commissions, so I haven't even done any Atoms to throw up on eBay. Usually I put a couple up every other week or so, just because, you know, I like throwing stuff on eBay so people who can't find my sketch cards impacts can kind of find them on there <laughs> i will not tease you probably send yours out tomorrow yeah i've had to go to like the post office like every day this week so it's a lot of a lot of uh, art i've been sending so i thank you guys for your support If it wasn't for you guys, how would I be paying my bills? But I like making cool projects with all y'all. With all y'all, with all y'all. Found a new way to organize my markers and it's weirdly enough been working. <laughs> Basically, I got this like a uh, black wire mesh box and I just stand them up in there and then I can see the colors on the tip of the lids. So I'm like, oh, OK, now I can don't have to roll them around and figure out what's going on. 
how's the post office? Um, it's easy for me because I print my postage at home. So literally, I just uh, I grab one of those uh, postage boxes, load up my box, drop it off, and then grab an empty and leave. It takes me like two minutes. And there's a post office like a three-minute drive from my house. I don't, I don't, I, once I figured out how to print postage at home, which you can do through PayPal, I was like, I ain't ever waiting in line at the post office again. I used to do that because I was like, oh, I'm afraid of leaving stuff behind. And I'm like, nah, it's all the same. I'm there so much, all the people there know my names. Oh, I have a funny story about the post office today. What is organized? Um, basically, uh, I ha I have an issue because I have so many markers, and there are these big ones. Like, if I lay them flat, I have to, like, you hear me go, like, oh, we're... Now I have them all sticking up, and I look over, and I'm like, oh, that color. Oh, that color. Oh, that color. So, it makes it easier. Especially when I'm doing live streams, because I don't want to waste time, your time, while I dig around for a color. Now I'm jinxing myself because I mentioned it, so now I'm going to have problems finding the colors I want during this live stream. Alright. And I, I know it looks patchy. It's just because uh, I'm not done yet. Not done yet, sir. Alright. Where is I? Oh yeah, over here. So yeah, I went to the post office today, and then uh, somebody left an iPhone with the AirPods plugged into the wall and, like, left. Like, they were probably going through their mail and forgot. I could have just taken the taken it, but I just told the guys, like, hey, you know, there's a uh, iPhone plugged into the wall here. They grabbed it for the lost and found. Because I'm not going to steal some random person's AirPods. You know, but that should tell you if you plug your stuff in somewhere randomly, uh, don't forget about it. Because Jesus, do you really want to uh, forget your iPhone plugged in some random place and get locked out? And then you're like, oof, because the doors of my post office automatically lock at six. So that probably happened to that person. They tried to go back and get their iPhone and it was all locked up. All right, now I need an ice blue, and I have so many ice blues. Nope, that's a crystal blue, but I'm going to need that in a minute. Crystal blue, another one. Ice blue. Who would have known I had so many crystal blues? And we're doing the eyeballs here. Well, thankfully, I'm entertaining a few of you guys. <laughs> but can you imagine that? I'd be afraid of leaving, losing my iPhone. I would be mad. I'm just putting a few of these markers away because I have a uh, unfortunate habit of forgetting them, of leaving them around, rather. All right. Let's see. Nope, not that one. Not that one. That one. Yeah, right? I, I don't know. I like... See, this is what I do, guys. Like, right now, I have uh, my phone plugged into a charger. This is not product placement. This is my charger. It's called my charger. Um, it's, like, really tiny. See, you know, it's about the size of half my iPhone. And then um, this thing pulls out, and it looks weird, but it plugs into a USB slot, and it barely weighs anything, and I can just drop it on the ground and use it. I also have a power bank, but I like using this one because it's easy, and I can use it, like, whenever. Sometimes you just got to invest in the chargers rather than, like, you know, end up in a bad spot. Because I've been looking for a charger that, like, 
I can just have around. And that's the one I was waiting for. And it like has like four charges on it, so which is good, especially the it doesn't look like a giant ass bank because those things are heavy. Have you written up a review yet for Vast of Night? Haven't gotten a chance to check the site yet. No, um, I'll probably put it up tomorrow. Um, you know, it it's cool. If you like, like, uh, Stranger Things and kind of like, uh, you know, like the Twilight Zone or American Graffiti meets Stranger Things. I gotta, like, uh, finish watching Lucky Grandma and, um, this other one on Netflix. Throw those up on there. I mean, you should watch it for sure. But yeah, I'll throw one up tomorrow. I'm uh, falling behind on doing uh, movie reviews. I need to get back on that horse. My goal is to like uh, get get into a uh, schedule where I'm alternating between doing live drawings and a pot and a video podcasts. So I, my goal is to kind of like start on that next week. This should be good. I've been watching a lot of video podcasts lately, so I kind of like getting the itch to climb back on the horse and it's like easier kind of like to do podcast reviews you know because i've been watching so much stuff and just not getting around to like reviewing it like uh i really like snowpiercer if you guys been watching uh snowpiercer on tnt if not you should um i've also been watching um penny dreadful on showtime the new one um i have definite thoughts on that <laughs> um in case you know nally dormer from like game of thrones she like she's like a devil kind of character and she plays like three or four different characters on that show um some better than others i just don't think a german or a british chick should be playing uh should be playing a pachuco hispanic chick it doesn't work at all um i mean there is there's a lot of indie stuff so i've been getting a lot of links so i've been watching stuff um but a lot of it is just coming straight to vod and some of the stuff the premium vod stuff has been just looking meh to me like, High Note comes out on Premium VOD, and I didn't really feel the need to review that because I knew I wouldn't be into it. I feel like that's kind of fair sometimes if you're not going to be into something. Um, I use chart these. Uh, which ones? These are the main ones I use, chart pack markers. These are uh, Tombow liners. You can kind of get those at um, Michael's. Um, I usually get those when, uh, get the flesh tone packs when Michaels is having sales on those because, uh, they blend with everything else I use. Uh, but these are the main ones I use. They're, uh, chart pack markers. Um, I get them at Blix or Jerry's Artorama. They are, uh, these are chisel tipped. Um... These have a, uh, like a pen nib tip, like, you know, like a felt tip markers and brush tip. I always use the brush tip. I don't like the, uh, pen nib tips. Um, my favorite tips I tend to work with are chisel tips because, um, I feel like, no, that's not true. I like chisel tips for this, for what I'm doing here, but I you like using brush tips for everything else picked up a little black there but that doesn't matter because uh, i'm gonna go all over this with an orange once it dries anyhow just tells you sometimes you gotta be a little careful um yeah brush tips are my favorites um um because i i did pen and ink when i was younger i i prefer I can ink with a brush. I just don't uh, like buying India ink, you know. 
and where my style is now it's very color forward and it's not very um i like I ink with colors rather you know so you know i build basically i build bases of lighter colors and build a dark um and then i add blacks if need be i don't like doing the blacks then colors like the out the tattoo technique because it's not like the blacks are holding the colors like a tattoo would sometimes they do a lot of it just depends on your paper stock too um i use a 120 pound uh stock for my uh personal sketch cards i know a lot of people um like to use uh the those iconics or whatever they're like 300 pound and those are like way too thick for me i like to have some bleed these are like what most sketch cards are my my sketch cards are, are better quality than uh top sketch cards i think top sketch cards are probably like 80 90 pound and they're really they have really rough cover stock like they're you know they're like kick, kick, kick. i don't like the teeth on them um the only decent sketch cards top uses tend to be for garbage pill kids the ones for like star wars are garbage that's one of the reasons i kind of stopped doing uh, star wars sets because i ain't gonna like break out super expensive markers every time to do shit i don't feel like painting sketch cards there's just not enough uh market but i think one of the things i have noticed is um you know a lot of people now are doing kind of their own sets like those um those uh vampire sketch cards or those 90s and 80s sketch cards i think i'm gonna start doing those but on my own you know like i might do a cult classic sketch card set and then if people want to buy those cards for me cool but I'm mainly going to just do them for myself, like themed around like, you know, things I like. Because that's a, I think that's the way to go. I think people like sketch cards and, and you know, things that uh, to, to know a bit of quality that they like. And they don't want like just some shitty like sketch card that like, oh, it might be a good artist. But like the, the stock is so bad that it's going to not be up to their usual quality you know like if i did like a 70s sci-fi set essentially that would be like star wars right <laughs> i don't know things that have popped up in my brain i have ideas Yeah, see, so that's like where my brain's at because I like doing garbage pill kids and stuff, but I don't want to get burnt out because I know there's a uh, there's a, a at least a couple new sets on the horizon, and I know I'll end up doing those. But actually, that'll be cool because then I can uh, draw, li do live drawing on those, maybe on like Patreon or something, so I don't get in trouble for showing you guys what I'm drawing. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, you know, because, I mean, I like, I liked the, the Star Wars sets I did, um, but, you know, when they ask you to draw, like, 160 Star Wars cards, you know, you're, at that point, you're just going to, like, StarWars.com, like, uh, what's this, what's a character I can use, <laughs> you know, because you're running out of ideas after, like, 80, you know, you, you don't like to start drawing, like, random droids, or characters from the cartoon, but sometimes it happens. You know, like I'll t uh, like I'll, I'll bring a point here. Um, I'm not a big Kylo Ren fan, so I was getting to the point where like, ugh, I do I really have to draw Kylo Ren just to like fill holes here? 
like it was getting to the point where like I'd rather draw like Boba Fett from a different angle. <laughs> Cause ultimately, like collectors tend to just buy a few characters. And then it tends to be the characters they you might have fun drawing something, but it turns out that character is not that popular among the fan base, and then you're kinda like stuck. You know. Wow, these oh yeah, here we go. Sorry, these two these two lids had very similar tops, and I'm like, oh. I actually did work on Stranger Things cards for tops. I did a, a whole set of them. And uh, they came out awesome, and then the tops told me that um, uh, Netflix rejected them, which was straight fucking bullshit. Because the likenesses were, like, spot on. You know? I was mad. They ended up paying me anyway, but I was like, what the hell, man? To this day, I kind of think they got my cards mixed up with somebody else's. But I fully expect one day I'll be like at a con or something. And I'll, someone will have the, all those cards I drew. Oh, yeah, no, they came out anyway. Yeah, no, um, the other ones I worked on were uh, Evil Dead cards for Fright Rags. That was a lot of fun. And I still, uh, I still have blanks for those. Those were fun, and my blanks went for decent cash when I draw them. So, not that it's all about money, but... And then I did Ninja Turtles cards for Tops. That was another set I had a lot of fun with. I wish they would do another set of those. They did some really cool Turtles ones for them. Just you know, filling in the uh, explosion here. Kind of getting done with him pretty soon. Oh, somebody bought one of my prints. Got an eBay alert. Do you think Mad Monster will happen in October? Um, I think it's likely. I mean, I hope it happens in October. I mean, I'll be real. I mean, it's not like they're going to come up with a, a vaccine for coronavirus by October. But, I mean, the president is pushing for, like, political conventions to happen in, like, four weeks. So, you know, if they end up having... The Republican convention in North Carolina, which is exactly where Mad Monster happens in North Carolina, Charlotte. Then they'll end up having it here in October because by then people will be like, oh, I guess we can do conventions, you know. And, you know, by October, I don't know. I, I'd like to think by then we'll have some kind of way of at least... uh contact tracing i don't know it i i feel conflicted because i want these things to happen but there's also this part of me that thinks is it safe for them to happen you know but i mean like i watch i watch footage of people like going to clubs and restaurants like it's no big thing anymore there's nothing we can do to like all all those months we spent in uh you know in in uh Isolation have kind of been uh, ruined <laughs> by people going out so hardcore. So eventually, you know, we're going to have to have conventions and stuff. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I, I'll put it in perspective. Like, I, I think... Uh, Movie theaters will probably be open by 
July or August, so we're just going to have to get used to uh, the new normal of, you know, capped attendance events and things like that. I mean, I did a convention right right when everything was starting to get locked down, and there weren't a ton of people there, but, I mean, people were spending money and doing things. This is going to be one of those things where, like, you just got to jump on getting tickets when they're available because likely, you know, things will just sell out faster. That's kind of what I... Th- that's kind of my two cents. Things are going to sell out faster in the short term. I don't know. If it seems like Mad Monster is going to happen in October, we'll probably know by August or, or September. I didn't get a table for this one because I didn't feel safe about it. I thought they were just going to cancel it outright. So, I don't know. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right. One more pass with the flesh marker. Feel free to ask me some more questions if you want. That looks pretty good. All right. Let's do some purple over here. Do you like purple as a background color? I don't know. I think it's going to be hard uh, for for us to gauge how events are going to do because no real events places have opened up yet, and uh, I think we're going to see people experimenting with different. Uh, ways of keeping people safe either if it's going to be like events are just going to become more expensive for a while and with less lesser seats and some places might do cheaper events with lesser seats just to get people in the door Well, nice. I'm glad you're digging it. Don't worry. I'll throw some more details in right now. Yeah, I have a lot of fun doing Adam sketches. In my mind, he's like the main character of Garbage Pail Kids, you know? Maybe, like, in most people's minds, I guess. Got a little, like, corona of explosion behind him. throw in some black on top of this gray closer to the explosion so it matches the card up a little bit kind of like my version of Kirby crackle when I do these dust dots dust dots Um, well, 
I'm sure they'll find ways to make it work. Um, a few years ago, I went to Mad Monster, and we did this photo op called the Pinhead Experience. And it was, like, a whole, like, little background thing where you, like, walked into the addict from Hellraiser. And then you're standing there, and there's a, uh, like, a, a puzzle box, and it opens up. And right when that happens, Pinhead comes out from the side, like, uh, the actor who played Pinhead in full costume. And it takes a picture of you, almost like a theme park ride. Like, ugh. I would think things like that are going to be more of a thing. Because he didn't really have to stand, like, next to us, you know? He just kind of was, like, in his spot, came out for a second, and you left, you know? Um, I imagine uh, autograph signings are going to be more like... If you're getting something signed, it might be in its own private, like, room. And you can watch it being signed... Or you hand it to the person, but you don't get to come up next to them and interact with them while they do it. You know? Which, I think that'll bum people out, but I think that's going to make photo op prices worth more money. Because I know some people do uh, autographs instead of photo ops so they can get a table photo. I think table photos are probably going to not be a thing anymore. Or like you have to wear your mask and you can take your mask off right before the photo, but you can't like shake hands or anything. Rona bomb. That's funny. Hey, I'm all about it. You want it? If you want that, I can totally do that for you. All right. This guy, I think, is done. I think pretty sure there is a girl, Adam Bomb. Because I've seen ones where he's kissing a girl and both their heads are exploding. the back a little bit of bleed but that's why i make it look like a wall so it's kind of, it's kind of like been tagged up a little bit the p the, the bleed on the back of real garbage pill kids cards is so bad there we go boom atom bomb you guys like that one It's 440. Um, do I want to draw something else? Uh, let me see. I have this one I drew a while back. I could probably color this one in for the rest of the show. Let's do that. This guy is called Jumping Zhang. Jumping Zhang. He's a hopping vampire like Mr. Vampire if you've ever watched any Chinese vampire movies. Let me see if I got jumping Jiang. I have a laptop on the side here that I use for my photo reference. I'm glad you like it, man. Yeah, we'll do this guy. I can I can color him in. Yeah, I'll send, I'll send this out uh, tomorrow. Uh, Dwayne, I'll throw in a couple of extras there, too, for you. All right. Well, let's make this one fun. He's got a little purple going on on him. Yeah, I've been, I drew this one, like, months ago. Like, literally months ago. So I'm just like, you know, I want to finish coloring him on a stream. So hopefully I get the opportunity. And here it is.
yeah, Chinese vampires are fun. I've been meaning to, uh, I mean, I don't know that this guy is that popular, but I don't know. I like, I like them. I wish I had, like, they were more popular in America. I have, like, this cool toy, uh, that I bought a while back. It's like this, uh, robot Godzilla, um, Sofubi. If you guys don't know what Sofubi is, it's like these rotocast Japanese toys. And it's, uh, Godzilla, but he's part robot, but he's also dressed just like this guy with a little hat. And you even put the symbol on his head. It's my, my only Chinese, it's my only Chinese vampire toy. I wish I had more. Eventually, I'm sure someone will make some. I'll find some from Japan or something. Alright, now most of his face is going to be ice blue, and then we'll add uh, sh darker blue shadings. You guys might notice I never like go full on like color everything because I like leaving highlights. Slightly blank areas. Yeah, I like how he's coming out. Jumping Zhang. Basically, think of him as uh, the Asian version of Nasty Nick. This might be a good one. I've been thinking of doing like a virtual, like, Terror Tuesday or Cult Classics event because I haven't done one in a while. Maybe Mr. Vampire would be a good one. Like, I would put it on or tell you how guys how to watch it, and then I'd just do live commentary over it. And we would all talk. It'd be fun. Hey, Kayla, how's it going? Let's let you know a different ice blue. That one's like too dead. Yeah, this one will do better. Fortunately, sometimes you're working on a piece and you're like, oh my gosh, this marker's dying on me. I'll just go over a little bit over some of the areas I drew on that one that were a little faded. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like my stuff. Yeah, I did an atom bomb earlier in the uh, in the live drawing cast. What would you call this? This live cast, live stream. And uh, then I wanted to do something in these last 20 minutes, and I remembered I had drawn this guy a while back and just never gone around to um, coloring him. So I thought he might be a good one to finish off the day with. And sometimes it's harder when you're doing characters you like that aren't that popular. They kind of like sit on the sidelines waiting for you to find some time to actually work on them. This guy was one of them. He's just kind of been waiting around. And right now, I just happen to have all the colors that I needed to finish him off. Alright, that's looking pretty good.
Yeah, this guy's going to have a, quite a bit of black on him, even though you don't see it yet. He's going to need that for uh, all the shading and such. I can already tell his face is going to be super animated. Yeah, pretty much. needed yellow. And then his sleeve is also yellow. Yeah, I notice I'm just doing this systematically. I'm like, yellows. We need to fill in all the yellows now. And sometimes it's a good way to go about it. Especially in a guy like this, it's only going to need one pass on a lot of the stuff. Alright. Alright. Now it's time to start filling in some blacks, maybe. Uh, not quite yet. I need to do uh, his hair over here. Yeah, now we can do some, uh, one more. I missed this over here. All right, let's do the face now. Do some uh, blue shading, then we'll do some actual shading. Glad you guys have been tuning in. Sorry I took so long off. Yeah, I like making this a daily thing, and sometimes it's just out of my control. yet so that's what's gonna make it really pop when it's all said and done and don't you hate it when you're chewing gum and it starts to run out of flavor some more around the eyes in a minute. I just want to get this paper done. Ugh, my eyes are watery. All right. That's the actual writing that's on the sticker. Just had to make sure I got that little detail in there. looking pretty good. Oh, 
Well, I'm glad that uh, you guys can join me seeing this guy get colored in. He's pretty fun. Getting a nice swoop in there. Um, I don't know. I think it's like a spell to make him uh, go back to sleep. When you watch these movies, um, they hop around and try to eat you. And then they stick that sticker on their forehead. And that's what stops them. So it's like a little spell that makes them like go back to being dead. Or like, you know... Not dead, like un, like un, unactivated. I actually think. Oh yeah, and I remember. So what I did is, I think I found the character, the Asian characters for GPK, and then I just wrote that on there because I thought that'd be like a good, um, like Easter egg. This is a paint pen. You've seen, if you've been on here before, you've seen me use it. Wondering if I needed to use this anywhere else. Right, yeah. Right, wouldn't that be nice? Alright, let's do some gray here. Back to some black. I'll just do the gray at the end if I need to do it. Pretty good. got to be careful not to touch the card. I don't want to smear that paint while it's drying. Hasn't happened yet, though, so that's good. Almost done. There we go. It's looking pretty good. Cool, man. See you later, dude. All right, and we'll finish this guy off right now.
This guy's slipping around on me. All right, stay still. I had to put my pen away. Uh, how am I gonna finish this off? Yeah, let's do red. Yeah, that would be good. All right. Using this as a thing to trace a circle. Oops, one slightly off. All right, that'll work. I could have just, you know, eyeballed it, but, you know, sometimes it's good to get close to the real circle. Just finishing this guy up. giving him a little moon so he has kind of like a vibe on uh, Nasty Nick and then throw in a purple here at the bottom we'll have some gray clouds to kind of bring it all together done. I promise. some flash highlights yeah and I have like my whole little system I'm so organized and then I of course I like mess it up because I'm not putting stuff back as I go along um there it is Me and my uh, moldy cheese moons. So yeah, put markers back as you go along, then you won't end up like, ugh, I ruined my system. All right, now I'll finish this up. Almost done. There we go. All 
Yeah, sometimes clouds just make things pop. A couple of little background effects. All right, and that one is done. 503, 23 minutes, not too bad. All right, let's peel him off because he's on my old stock. So there we go. Jumping is young. Yeah, see, that's why I don't use this old cardstock anymore. All right, so there's that guy. And this guy. I'll throw him on eBay later today. But yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed Sketch Car today. If you enjoyed what you saw, hit me up. I'm always looking to do some commissions and draw them for you live on stream. Try to make them affordable. Stay tuned tomorrow. We'll have that deal on some uh, head sketches. And thank you for tuning in. Hope you guys had fun. And uh, I will talk to you all later.